So let's go ahead and look back on this 07 draft. And if we start right at the top, it's probably the biggest bust in NFL history. With the first pick in the 2007 NFL draft, the Oakland Raiders select quarterback Jamarcus Russell, LSU. Like, here's the thing that is lost in the Jamarcus Russell conversation. If I read off these stats to you and I read off like his dimensions, you would say you have to take him number one overall. So his stats. His final season at LSU, 232 completions, 342 attempts. Completed 67.8% of the That's attempts. a lot. That's a high percentage. 3,100 passing yards, yeah. 28 touchdowns, only 8 interceptions. So then when you go and you talk about the size, 6'4", 6'5", big arm, there's a lot of conversation about, look, this dude is a franchise quarterback. You have to take a franchise quarterback when you're sitting at the top of the board and you don't have one. There is an understanding of why. Now, there's a lot to like about what he was able to do. He just flamed out and sometimes it just happens like that you can make the conversation that hey marshawn lynch would have been the better pick but quarterback yeah. kind of trumps everything it does so. it does i understand why they took jamarcus russell but looking back on it now you would have had no problem with them taking marshawn lynch number one overall if he'd have finished his career as a raider like he actually did and, and put up the numbers that we're talking about here 84 rushing touchdowns and over 10,000 rushing yards it had been worth it at that point based on, you know, where you ended up going. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Let's move to number two. With the second pick in the 2007 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions take wide receiver Calvin Johnson, Georgia Tech. Look, this, is, this was a slam dunk. Even though the Lions had taken a ton of receivers up high before, Matt Millen, absolutely, probably the best move he ever made was not passing up on Calvin Johnson. Yeah. Well, there's an argument that could be made that Calvin Johnson was the best player in this draft. And oh, yeah. A conversation came out later that Lane Kiffin actually wanted Calvin Johnson number one overall when they elected wow, to yeah. Marcus Russell. Calvin Johnson, you can't argue or dispute anything about what he's been able to do. You look at all of his NFL honors. No. For the year, six-time Pro Bowler, three-time first-team All-Pro, set a single-season record for receiving yards, seven 1,000-yard seasons, 80, 83 touchdowns in his career. Is everything that you want from a guy that is the second overall pick? We've heard Dave Gettleman in recent years talk about the guy that you take, second overall, needs to be a gold jacket guy. Yeah. But based on that standard, there it is. Say, look, they met the standard. The Detroit Lions got a gold jacket guy and Calvin Johnson. So even though maybe we would like to see them take a guy like Marshawn Lynch in that pick, because they had Kevin Jones, I think they hit it out the park with Kevin Jones. Yeah, no question. <laughs> yeah, we had a gold jacket guy at number three as well. Look, Joe Thomas is going to be in the Hall of Fame one day in Canton. Uh, right yeah, there where I mean, he played in Cleveland. That in. was a no-brainer. The Cleveland Browns select left tackle Joe Thomas, Wisconsin. Yeah, I mean, pre premier left tackle. They finished 31st in offense the year before. They needed someone that could be a benchmark player, a guy that could solidify that side of the line. He did it. Talking about 10-time Pro Bowl, a guy yeah. that never missed a start until he was injured and then it subsequently retired. 10-time right. Pro Bowl, a six-time All-Pro. Yeah. yeah, I think I think the Cleveland Browns got it right when they took Joe Thomas because the foundational player, when you think about the lifespan of the position, offensive tackle trumps running back. Yeah. Joe Thomas was a great player. Uh, number four, the Bucks took Gaines Adams out of Clemson. God rest him. Uh, died at 26 uh, from a heart condition. Did not uh, last very long in the league. Uh, played three years. Ended up with the Bears. Uh, never, never necessarily panned out or lived yeah. up to expectation. The, Buc the Bucks thought they were getting a guy that could come in and, and kind of give them what they had when they had Simeon Rice, yeah. a dominant pass rusher. Never really showed that potential. When and they had go, Cadillac Williams, too. They had Cadillac Williams. Cadillac Williams had been a guy that was like, like – really like a big time player early in his career. Sure. I want to say as a rookie, maybe he was offensive rookie of the year or yeah. in that conversation for offensive rookie year. John Gruden loves running backs, loves guys that can run and get it done. He took him. It, it, it didn't necessarily work out with Gaines Adams and then with Cadillac. If you think about Marshawn Lynch being uh, the epicenter of that offense and the way they want to run, he certainly would have fit the bill. So I do believe we can make that a could have been a spot right there. Yeah. At number four, Definitely Marshawn Lynch would have been a better pick. At number five, look, Levi Brown, uh, left tackle out of Penn State. This guy who you know, started, I believe, four straight years for the Cardinals, but was middle Not of the road. Script, middle right? of the road, just okay. When we look at it, this was a team that was middle of the pack on offense. I mean, could they have gotten a burst? They had Edron James. That's the thing. You go 
and stack yeah. Marshawn Lynch on top of Edron James? Nah, because they just got an Edron James from the Indianapolis Colts. Look, he gave them 1,100 yards. Right, he's coming off a report. really good season. Coming off a solid season. So running back wasn't necessarily nah, a need. I, yeah. But Marshawn Lynch, in that division, we saw what he had done in that NFC West division. That's right. Uh, and younger, against the Cardinals in particular. Yeah. He's quite point two. Yeah, yeah. A, a younger, more physical runner at that stage of his career. Maybe you can see it. If you had to pick between Marshawn and Levi Brown, you would take Look, Marshawn. Look, now you would take Marshawn. But now, if you're looking back, Marshawn, Edwin James, it would have been a tougher decision. I got to run harder, huh? LaRon Landry out of LSU at number six. This was, I believe, this was the 07 draft. This was three years after Sean Taylor went number five to the Redskins. So they, in a span of four years, they spent two top six picks on safeties. And Sean Taylor was still a part of the program at this point. Still a part of the program, yeah. and what they wanted was a dominant, a dominant one, back end. One two punch in, in the back end. And you got to think they had Clinton Portis. They had you know, Clinton well. Portis. They were able to run the football. Look, LaRon Landry was, was solid initially, made all rookie team, was a Pro Bowl. Uh, doing a season with the Jets. The combination and what they thought they were going to get, they never really had a chance to really see it. They never really got a chance to see the Sean Taylor, LeBron Landry. No, unfortunately. Once you punch, yeah. Sean Taylor he passed died, away. Yeah. Later that year. Later that year, so you didn't have a chance to really see it blossom. And then Liddell Best for the Washington Redskins played well. <laughs> yeah, 1,100 yards, yards. Four touchdowns. Clinton Porter said 500. So running back wasn't a pressing need. It didn't work out. So I can't really knock them for not taking Marshawn Lynch. With the seventh pick, in the 2007 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Adrian Peterson, running back, Oklahoma. Now this is really the decision point because Adrian Peterson is in this class. Uh, top seven pick to get a gold jacket guy because he's going in the Hall of Fame. Uh, rookie of the year. The guy has 13,000 yards, rushing yards, which raced eight most off all time. Yeah. And then he had a 2,000 yard rushing season i mean we can debate it so we can go back and forth nobody was going to take marshawn before adrian Peterson, see but right? it, it, it's, here's here's the thing in talking to coaches there were a handful of coaches that believed that marshawn lynch was a more pro ready running back because of what he was able to bring dual the passing yeah game. Could catch the ball out the backfield he was a physical runner he was every man's pro running back he's the ideal workhorse adrian peterson was a throwback he was a hammerhead, a guy that could run it, but all he's going to do is really run it. Couldn't really give you anything on third down. However, we've said this, if your special traits are really special and you do that role better than anybody else on the planet, sometimes you have to make an exception. He was exceptional as a runner. And the Minnesota Vikings believe that his special traits, meaning the way that he ran the football, particularly in between the tackles, was better than anybody on the planet, which is why they and took they were him. Right. <laughs> they were right. I mean, I know I'm going to get got. But I'm going to get mine more than I get got, though. Here's another spot for Marshawn. Run on running backs could have started here. Instead, the Falcons at number eight selected Jamal Anderson out of Arkansas. Played in six NFL seasons, but, I mean, you barely noticed him. at seven and a half sacks in his career. No, this was a reach. This is one that they would love to have back. I mean, you'd love to have a duo over here at the Atlanta Falcons. Work done at rush for 1,100 yards. Only had four touchdowns. Uh, Jim Moore had been fired. They bring in Bobby Petrino. Bobby Petrino. I mean, you talk about the, the prospects of Bobby Petrino taking over an offense that had Michael Vick, and then potentially you would have Marshawn Lynch. You had all the issues that took place, so Mike Vick never was really able to play for the Atlanta Falcons under Bobby Petrino. And so this changes the entire dynamic of the franchise. You take Jamal Anderson, Jamal Anderson never gives you big-time contributions as a top-ten pick. And so Marshawn Lynch, in this version of the Atlanta Falcons, I think they would prefer to have that because, remember, after Bobby Petrino was eventually fired, they bring over uh, Mike Smith. Mike Smith gets Bernie Turner. Oh, yeah. Ball, Matt Ryan, they begin to go on and on and on. They go to the playoffs five straight years, and away they go. Maybe they could have jump-started their reboot of Marshawn Lynch being there. As we move to the number nine pick, which ended up being the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins select Ted Ginn. Why do you see that? Unbelievable speed, quickness. Now, he had a broken foot. I don't think he was able to work out, but you talk about a guy that was a junior Olympic high hurdler champion. Uh, his speed was real. He was a big time returner, and when he made plays, they popped on tape. His flash plays were unbelievable. So you got a two for one guy when you're the Miami Dolphins. And if you're the Miami Dolphins and what you're thinking, the year before they ranked fourth on defense, they were 20th on offense. So Cam Cameron is like, oh, they hired me. Let's, come Let's get the, the offense going. Let's get some juice. And so they wanted a juice player in Ted Ginn Jr. Unfortunately for him, it, it reminded me of the Daniel Jones situation. Ted Ginn comes in, 
No one really liked the pick. They booed him. I think this is way too high for Ted Ginn, and I love his explosiveness. World-class speed, he gets vertical. I think he's a very average route runner. He faced a lot of criticism for what he wasn't, but what he's been, he's been a pretty solid player in the National Football League. When the Carolina Panthers made their Super Bowl run, a lot of it was due to Ted Ginn. Ted Ginn. The Saints have been really good with Ted Ginn. The Saints have been able to do it. And so what you've had to do is find the right role for Ted Ginn. And when they, once they found the right role, he's been able to be very, very successful. Dolphins were never going to take Marshawn Lynch at nine. No, they I mean, had just Marshall. taken Ronnie Brown number two overall yeah, no, two years ago. Can't bring him that was not going to happen. And I think we still have Ricky Williams on the squad kind of hanging out there. Yeah. In so, Never look, Neverland. This so was I, never going to be a spot not for Marshawn. Not, not a spot. Not a fit. I'm just here so I won't get fined. However, the number 10 spot could have certainly been a place for Marshawn Lynch. Gary Kubiak is your head coach of the Houston Texans on the clock here at number 10. And they select Amobi Okoye, defensive tackle, Louisville. Amobi, Amobi Okoye. Give it to us, yeah, from Louisville. From Louisville. I mean, look, five and a half sacks, first year selected all rookie team. Uh, but that was a positive. Played seven years in the league for the Texans, Bears, and Cowboys. Only finished with 16. So in his first year, he had almost all of his sacks. All of his sacks, yeah. You know, but look, understand, Gary Kubiak, Gary Kubiak and Mike Shanahan worked together. They didn't place a lot of value in drafting a running back right. guy because of the success that they had with TD, our own Terrell Davis. Terrell Davis was found sixth round. They had a bunch of guys in Denver go and have a 1,000-yard seasons. They believed it was a system more so than the players, so they weren't going to value Marshawn Lynch in that vein, which is why Gary Kubiak passed on him and signed Amon Green. Amon Green uh, signed before the draft, a four-year deal at that point. Amon Green was a talented player. He was. At the time, was a big-time runner, had been very successful after coming over in trade from Seattle to Green Bay. Did not end up it working never, out. It never really worked Houston. out. Never yeah. really worked out. 260 yards his first year in Houston. He played in 14 total games for the Texans after signing a four-year deal like that. Okay, well, I mean, yeah, it didn't work out. Marshawn okay. would have right. been, nice been a nice fit there. Would have been a nice fit. Uh, let's move on to number 11. So the pick before Marshawn actually went, the San Francisco 49ers selected Patrick Willis, the linebacker out of Ole Miss. And look, he was he was the best linebacker in football for a best time. linebacker in football for a long time. And look at some of the guys that went ahead of him. But in Patrick Willis, you had a guy that some viewed maybe is a little undersized, didn't know how he would stack up. But then he comes and he takes the league by storm. All rookie team, seven time Pro Bowler, five time first team All Pro. The numbers are ridiculous. Over 900 tackles, 20 and a half sacks, eight interceptions, six seasons with 100 plus tackles. He is everything that you expect when you take a guy at number 11. Big time player, a guy to kind of set the tone for the San Francisco 49ers and really started the reboot of the 49ers as they emerged as a Super Bowl team. And, I mean, Frank Gore had almost 1,700 yards rushing in 2006. So they were not going to take a, another guy to take carries away from Frank Gore uh, in Marshawn Lynch, which probably would have loved going to the Bay, but that did not work out. And so at number 12, the Bills select Marshawn Lynch. This was a team that had just traded away Willis McGahee. They selected Willis McGahee coming off the injury out of Ohio State. Ends up playing pretty well for him. And then made some comments or something. Guys got, got sideways or, with, yeah, the, wanted, with the wanted, community wanted. and the team. And Coach said that uh, he was hoping that you would hit more holes and instead of running sideways. Is that an issue? Were you a little too hesitant on, on Sunday? Well, you know, it's a different story out there on the field doing it yourself. But. They shipped him off to Baltimore, and that cleared the way to take Marshawn Lynch. That a look there at how Marshawn Lynch ended up going number 12 overall in the 2007 NFL Draft to the Buffalo Bills, but uh, just might have finished his career after a most successful stint in Seattle with the Oakland Raiders.